a snowball. You wanna know my name or the name of my horse? You ask me. Who the hell you calling snowball, horse boy? I'll snatch your ass off that man down here in the mud so fast, make no head. Steven, 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 Steven. Let's keep it funny. Django here is a freeman. This nigga here? That nigga there. Let me at least introduce the two of you. Django, this is another cheeky black bugger like yourself, Steven. Steven, this here is Django. You two ought to hate each other. Now, before I start, let me address this. If I use the words black and white during this excerpt pertaining to a human being, you must know I am only using it to reach those who are programmed by these trigger words. I myself do not ascribe to being black. I signify myself as a child and a vessel of God. They have bamboozled us all, tricked us into a mental state of hate that most of us have passed along to our kids to further their agenda for them while they sit back eating filet mignon, y'all. The young lady wants a filet mignon. You know, little hunk of meat, little pink on the inside. Filet mignon. Which is basically the Willie Lynch effect where they took the chains off the peasant's hands and ankles and put them on their minds, creating an invisible gun line that you can never cross unless you wake up. Now, where was I? You don't need no fences at Camp 8, bro. Oh, no. What? You don't need no fences here at Camp 8, bro. Gun line, bro? Yes. Yes. God has never supported bondsmen in tortured and cruel slavery. There are proofs of this. Exodus chapter 21, verse 16 states, he that stealeth the man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, shall be put to death. Deuteronomy 24, 7 states, If a man be found stealing anyone to make merchandise of them, then that thief should be put to death. Deuteronomy chapter 15 even talks about letting your hired hands go after six years, and when you let them go, you send them away with goods and not lacking. God also warns his children in Deuteronomy about the difference between someone coming up under you as a hired hand and stealing someone to become your slave, which is a total difference. Hired hands willingly came under someone who was prosperous so that they could get up on their feet, so to speak. And God warned his children to treat them with respect and take care of them as they would want to be treated themselves. This world has always been about royalty and wealthy ruling over peasants or those who were lacking in finances and resources. Simple as that. When we went out to feed the homeless on this channel on the 27th, we saw all nationalities sleeping in tents and lacking in resources and finances and going through some things. And that's how it's always been. Muslims of African descent in the days of old, they ran slave trades well before the Englishmen came down and got involved. The pharaohs, who were presumably brown skinned or black men, who enslaved the Hebrews were also said to be of brown skin for over 400 years. Well, isn't this brown skin enslaving brown skin? The Midianites, who were presumably brown skin because they came forth from Abraham's son called Midian, they enslaved who we call brown skin or black people for seven years. Nah, I'm your king. That can be found in Judges chapter 6 verse 1. So isn't this brown skin enslaving brown skin? How can modern day Hebrew Israelite racist bullhorners be mad at the white man, but not be mad at the so-called blacks who supposed to be their people who enslaved other blacks? I don't know. I think I'm gonna say go fetch, you fetch. You see me hang, you gonna know. You gonna know you kill a black brother. As if you get a pass depending on the levels of melanation and sunlight radiation that flow through you. White slaves were sent to multiple countries during the 14th and 15th centuries in what we call the booming slave trade. They would be shipped to places like Italy, Spain, Egypt, and the Mediterranean islands, Barbados, and Virginia. Back then, Barbados would beat those slaves to death if they got out of order. Most of these slaves were brought from the north, from England, which was mixed 
but it was predominantly of lighter toned people. Same way it is today. And this accumulated what they called the slums. These were areas of poverty pits that included lots of whites suffering. They were lacking clothes, eating out of trash cans, and pretty much living the life of the average homeless person in your city today. In the 17th century, you had what was called Barbary pirates that didn't really search for treasures, but for slaves to come and work in Muslim countries. And these slaves were presumably white. Muslims enslaved Christians in the days of old as well. And Christians were of all colors. Same way they are today. This is why Farrakhan, coons like Farrakhan, they are esteemed so high today as well. Because his side of the chessboard, which is basically the black side, is keeping the hate going, which is basically the chains placed on the mind. In slavery, that was the good old day. <laughs> In a previous video, I showed you all how Farrakhan and the nation of Islam work hand in hand with the Freemasons as they continue to pump hate and confusion in the atmosphere so we as people will never come together. As long as we don't come together, then these so-called elites will stay rich and in power in this world. And all the black folk that didn't want to talk to me before, it's all right now because we white folk give you permission. It has always been about the wealthy enslaving those who don't have. The ones with the money have always rounded up the slaves and skin color has never mattered. It was about who they could put to work. Simple. Most of y'all go to work every day and clock in on the job that you think is so great. But in all actuality, they are the second level plantations in this wicked pyramid scheme. And when you look around the job, you see all colors, nationalities, creeds, races, why? Because slavery has always worked this way. Their biggest fear is everyone waking up out of the brainwash and hypnosis and calling them out and revolting against their sinister plans. That's their biggest fear. Blacks and whites make slave movies. And we can't even see that they are all friends. And while the seeds are being planted in our minds from these movies, they go off with each other in the sunset smiling because as long as we eat the separation they are feeding us, then all is well. Every color, every creed, every nationality, every race of people have been enslaved at some point of time in this earth. If you disagree with that, then you are delusional and you need the Holy Spirit to reveal this to you. Why do you rush and go and see a slave movie? Do you think it's going to be something in it that you haven't heard before? Is it for educational purposes? Is it because you have been programmed so long by the trigger words black and white that you subconsciously have made this concept an idol in your life? Let's see what the Bible has to say about white. Matthew 17, 2 talks about garments or clothing being white. Mark chapter 9 talks about clothing being white. Matthew 28 talks about clothes being white. Basically, what I am saying is when the Bible speaks about white, it is usually referring to a horse or clothing. Let's see what the Bible has to say about black. Matthew chapter 5 talks about black hair. Leviticus 13 talks about black hair. It speaks about a black horse in Zechariah chapter 6. 2 Peter 2 and Jude 1 both talk about darkness or evil being blackness. Most racist Hebrew Israelite bullhorners, they'll try to take you to Job chapter 30 verse 30 when Job said, my skin is black upon me. Now, if you think that Job was speaking in the same context that we speak today, you are highly mistaken. Right before he said his skin is black, he mentioned his bowels being boiled, affliction coming upon him, him crying in the congregation, him being a brother to dragons and a companion to owls, which means he felt he was cursed. Then he states directly behind all of this that his skin is black. Joe wasn't under the new Willie Lynch indoctrination that you're under, so he meant something totally different. He was describing the different ways that he was suffering. And when he said his skin was black, it was describing the bodily ailments that he was under and enduring. Because directly after that, he stated that his bones was burned with heat. Now, we all know that his bones weren't literally burned. It was figurative speaking. He was describing the torment and tribulation he was facing. As well as we all know that his skin wasn't literally black. He was using black to describe the dark elements of suffering he was going through. So being black in this aspect was not a good thing. So why do you call yourself black today? Mm -hmm. I, I was in Mississippi. I was in Mississippi doing a show and I go to the restaurant to order some food. And uh, I say to the guy, I say, I would like to have, and before I even finish my sentence, he says, the chicken. <laughs> What's that?
I could not believe it. Could not believe it. This man was absolutely right. I said, how did he know that I was gonna get some chicken? Then they would try to take you to the last and final verse where Solomon, in Solomon chapter one, verse five says, I am black. He said, I am black, but commonly, which means pleasant to look at. Now the word, but lets you know that commonly and black are two totally opposites here. If you learn anything in the fake old schools about conjunctions, no one was going around calling themselves black or white as signifying pigment classes in the days of old, y'all. We were given these titles to keep division amongst the people so that the so-called crabs in the bucket, or peasants as they call them, will forever pull each other down. You are the agents helping to pull people down into this captivity. Perfect world will dream that your primitive cerebrum kept trying to wake up from. Which is why the Matrix was redesigned to this the peak of your civilization and i say your civilization because as soon as we started thinking for you it really became our civilization which is of course what this is all about when tv came out in the 1940s 1950s the first things they fed us was the vision stories of racism that would groom us into the new willie lynch indoctrination and mind state the more we sit back and harp on whose ancestors got did the worst, the longer we will be chained down in this demonic system. All have been enslaved and we are all still enslaved. The big question is, how do we come to a common ground with our neighbor today who is going through the same thing? Bone dust. Is this your king? Huh? Is this your king? 